This video is going to show you how to do a two proportion Z test in Excel. And so I'm going to start with the claim I have here. There is no difference in proportion between the two populations. And I'm given a level of significance and the sample sizes and the proportions, uh, the sample proportions for the two samples. So my claims, my hypothesis looks like this, where the claim is the null hypothesis because it says there's no difference so that means they're equal and so this is going to be a two-tailed test I'm looking at the alternative hypothesis and since I am dealing with proportions I'm going to be using a normal distribution now in some problems you're going to be given the x values and you have to calculate the proportions um, then in this case I've been given the proportions and I have to calculate uh, the number of successes. And in either case, I'm using this formula here. If I was given x, well, I would just divide x by n to get this 0.72. Um, because I was given p hat, well, if I take p hat times the, x, the n, that will give me the x value that I need. So here I'm going to do this one times that. And then I'll just copy that over and to repeat it for the uh, second population and so with most of these what i'm doing is i'm calculating some test statistic here it's a z because i'm using a normal distribution and then i find the area to the left or to the right um, of that test statistic and so here is the formula for how i'm going to calculate this test test statistic and uh, this one is pretty complicated it's even broken down into two formulas with this p bar is right here. So I'm going to break this down quite a bit over here to make sure that um, I don't get lost in all those calculations. So I'm going to start with this p bar, which is often referred to as the pooled proportion. And so that's going to be the sum of the x's. And I need those to add before they divide. So I'm going to put parentheses around it. And then divide that by the sum of the ends. And again, I need those uh, samples to be sample sizes to be added before the division happens. So I put parentheses around those as well. So there is p bar. Now I need one minus p bar, also referred to as q bar, um, in this formula. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate that as well. So one minus what I just got there. And there's something else that's inside that square root at the bottom is the sum of one over each sample. So I'll do that as well. So one over in one plus one over in two. And the parentheses are probably not necessary here, but sometimes I just like to err on the side of caution. Okay, so there's that. And so I have pretty much everything I need. I'm gonna start by calculating the numerator. Now this piece right here is actually zero because we're always assuming that the null hypothesis is true. And so if those are equal, subtracting them would actually give me zero. So I'm really just gonna focus on this first set of parentheses on the top. So equals sum of p values. Make sure you're doing the p's, not the x's. Okay. And then the denominator is going to be the square root of all those things I calculated. So p bar times q bar times those sample sizes. And those are all inside the square root. So there's the denominator for my z statistic. So now I just have to divide those. So. And finally, we've got our Z statistic. Oh, and I just realized I made a mistake here. I added instead of subtracted right here. It's really easy to make a mistake with these. Okay, that looks much better. Okay, so remember, I want a Z score that's not too crazy big or crazy small. So this is a much better looking Z score. All right, so now I have my z-score. All I need to do is start calculating those p-values. I'm going to do all three tails, just in case I'm dealing with a different type of test. 
Okay, so I'm using the normal distribution. So for the area to the left of a z-score, it's norm.s.dist. And it's a z-score, and it's cumulative because I want everything to the left. And there is my p-value if I was doing a left-tailed test. If I was doing a right-tailed test, it would be everything to the right of my z-score. So I can just do 1 minus what I just got. And there is my value for a right-tailed test. If I'm doing a two-tailed test, I'd want to take the smaller of these two values I just got and double it to get both tails. So I'm going to do 2 times the min of these two. Whichever is the smaller, I'm going to multiply that one by 2. And there is my p-value for a two-tailed test, which this one is. And so if I compare that to my level of significance, well, this is definitely bigger than 0.01, so it's greater than alpha. So if I come over to my decision rule when p is greater than alpha, then I fail to reject the null hypothesis. And since our claim is the null hypothesis, it means I can't reject the claim either. So there is not enough evidence to reject the claim.